So I've got this guitar riff. I want to make a song out of it, but it's just me here. I mean, I know some other musicians, and I even play in a live band sometimes, but for the most part, I'm like almost everyone else, and I'm making music by myself. Social interaction is so last century. Anyway, I've got a couple options if I want to make and record a full song out of this riff. One, I could go find a bass player, a drummer, a singer, and maybe a keyboard player. I mean, how hard could that be? Uh, so it says here you only play four string basses, but that looks like a six. I play Metallica. Uh, okay, um, can you play along with the track I sent you? Does it sound like Metallica? Uh, thanks to you for taking the long ride up here. Did you run into a lot of traffic? Nah, there wasn't. There wasn't too much traffic. Uh, and you know, cool. I'm like, you know, excited to do this, so it's gonna be a cool project. Cool. cool. Uh, but uh, I have a some random question. Was that uh, is that your wife at the door? Yeah, that's my wife. Okay, giddy. Hey man, I really enjoyed that demo track you sent me. Oh, thanks, dude. So you think you could write like a killer piano part over a rock tune like this? Ah, uh, yeah, dude. I could definitely write a killer track over this. But one question: What's your policy on bringing livestock to rehearsal? Two, I could go on a place like Fiverr and hire some studio players. This is an option I've actually used to work with a couple of great singers. Or three, I could use some really cool software to fill in the gaps and have a freaking awesome time doing it. And option three is what we're going to talk about in this video, and welcome to Music with Marky. Okay, before I get over to the studio desk and start, I want to point out that this video is not sponsored in any way. I'm going to be showing you three products from the same company because they are what I use constantly and I 100% feel like this is the best way to be a one-man band. The company is TuneTrack and we're going to use Easy Drummer, Easy Bass, and Easy Keys to be the players around our one-man guitar show. Let's pop over to the studio desk and get started. Okay, I've got an instance of Reaper loaded up here, which is my DAW of choice. If you're not familiar with what that is, I'll put a link up. I have a whole video talking about it. Uh, first thing here is that I have the riff loaded up and you heard me play it before. Just a mono track, kind of scratchy. I'm going to have to EQ that a bit. But the first thing is I want to have a drummer in the band and then start playing the rest of the parts along with the drums. So what I have here is an instance of Easy Drummer 3. Load it up in the corner here. I'm using one of the kits that comes with Easy Drummer 3. I have a lot more because I've been purchasing them over years through when it was Easy Drummer 2 and they converted over. Uh, but I'm using this one preset. I think it works for this kind of music really well. And I'm gonna use the feature called Bandmate so that I don't have to write drums myself or I'm not gonna be searching through libraries of MIDI drums that I have saved, which I have thousands and thousands of them that I also uh, purchased from Easy Drummer and a whole bunch come with it. But what I wanna do is just have this kind of be my drummer with AI and write for me. So I'm gonna take this track over here. I have to hold Control and Alt and then drag it in, and then it's going to write a drum part. Uh, over here on the bottom left, I'm gonna select metal, and let's do closed hi-hat A. Let's just play it and hear how it sounds. That's not bad. I might want a little more kick drum and a little less hi-hat. It almost has a bit of a poppy flavor to it rather than a uh, more of a metal flavor. Let's ratchet up the kick drum and see how it sounds now. Yeah, that's cool. I want to bring an open hi-hat instead. Let's see how that sounds. Bring the hi-hat back, bring the kick drum up. Yeah. Even have less of it. Uh, so I like that a lot better. It's a little more metally sounding. This is going to be an intro. So I'm going to drop that drum beat in. You can see me putting it in here. Now you see it's off to the right uh, because what I'm doing, let me just get rid of these. I'm not sure if I have to do that actually, but I always do. All right. So I want to have the guitar kind of soloed by itself. And then like I'll put a drum fill here and I'm going to have the guitars then split stereo and go through one more time with the drum beat. That'll be my intro to the song. 
and then we're going to go over to have like a verse where it'll be i think it's like a keyboard sound so you can see easy keys so i'm going to quick perform the guitar and stick the fill in there uh, let me show you me sticking the fill in actually so you can see how that works i just go over to grooves over here and as you see i have a ton of these things i'm going to go through and find something that's roughly the same tempo and i'm going to listen to the fills that's not the one but i'm going to go through this on my own and i'll you'll see i have a fill dropped in there until i find the one that i like and then i'll record the uh, guitars and we'll come back and load up the bass plugin okay so as you can see i have uh, recorded the other guitar parts now i've got them split stereo so it has a little drum fill off the intro the mono intro and it goes into that the next thing i want to do is do the bass i have easy bass loaded here i'm using the metal version of it you can buy the basic one or any one of these as separate plugins this is a metal song so i'm doing the metal bass and I want to do the same thing again with the AI. I'm not going to pick from a library of bass parts. I want it to lock in with the bass drum and sound properly metal. Uh, I guess if I was playing the bass myself, I'd either do that or I'd double the guitar. In this instance, we're just going to lock in with the drums. I can't take the audio like I did with the uh, Easy Drummer. I can't take the audio and load it in and have it right apart. I have to take MIDI, whether it be from keyboards or in this case, the drums. Now, one slightly annoying thing with this, I can't take the drum track that was generated and drag it in. If I just click and drag it to bring it in, it it makes it won't go in there. It tries to make an extra track. I don't know if you can see what's going on in the background, but it doesn't work. If I do the control alt click thing and drag it over, it thinks it's empty. So I have to go through this one extra step because this is a generated file. It's not from the Easy Drummer library itself. And I outputted uh, the MIDI from this channel as a MIDI file onto my desktop that I can then just load in here. So I grabbed that MIDI file, just clicked and dragged it in, and you'll see it's just writing a mono bass part that locks in with the bass drum, which for this part of the song I'm fine with. We'll do something more complex for the verse. Now this riff was in the key of E minor, so I have, if you notice in the bottom here, I think you can see that I have it set to E minor. You can choose the key. And it's just doing a mono low E note, just playing the same note over and over again. Now I'm gonna drag that. This is the one I'm using. I can use, I can have it go to the bass in the snare. I could have it do like a slap thing. I could have it play to the power hand, which is the hi-hat. But again, we're doing the bass drum. So I just drag that in. It starts on measure 11, I think. Even though the song's in E minor, we're playing on a low B string of the five string there. So it's actually a mode called B Phrygian. So I need to change this to a B minor or just a B. It's one note. There's no really indication of minor or major unless you play a scale. But I double click in here and I select B minor. Now, that's all cool and everything. That's a high B. This is a metal track. We want a low B string like the guy's got a five string bass. So I'm also going to select here. I'm going to grab all of these and I'm just going to drag them down an octave. Now we have it so it's locked in to this part. Let's hear it together. That's a problem right there, but pretty cool. This is an instant bass player. So I just load that back up. That is measure 17 where the fill starts. So over here, and that B is where I play, I switch to a D note. So we just switch to a D there. Let's hear it. Cool. And now we have a fill on the end there. So I am gonna go into the library and find like a little bass fill. And then we're gonna move on to the verse where I'm gonna select a drum track from the library and then put a keyboard, like a cool synthy keyboard thing going on and a bass to it. And I would stick a lead guitar over that as, or, or the vocals would start there depending on what I'm doing with the song. So let me just get the uh, bass fill in there. We will just have you take a look at that. We look in the groove library and we can go with metal. 
So anyway, I'll save you suffering me looking through libraries of base fills and I'll find one in there and we'll move on to the next spot. So you see now we have a first section loaded. I put some more drums in. This time I selected drums from a library. It's the Metal Fusion Library. I just knew I wanted kind of a halftime thing to go on here. I didn't have a guitar part. This is going to be the keyboard part that I'm going to show the other software for. And hopefully it'll fit kind of well with the drums. We can always adjust from there. So I load up the keyboard plug in here. I'm using hybrid harp, which is an instrument. It's one of the ones you can buy. You can get the harp, uh, cinematic grand piano, electronic, like road stuff. This is this heart one and I'm using the preset vinyl strings, just like the way it sounds for what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to go to the browser. In this case, I'm going to use something called an Epic theme. I kind of went through some off camera here and found something that I liked and I have to drop it in. We're on measure number 19 and you'll see right away. It starts with E minor. Well, we want this to be in B minor uh, or in uh, B Phrygian in the key of E minor, but starting and ending on B. So I can change just like with the bass. I can change the chords here with the easy keys and I can take this E minor and make it a B minor. And I'm okay with the A minor and the E sus4 here. When we come back to the E, it's the repeat of the part. It's going to be a B again. So every four measures, we got to change an E to a B to make it fit what we're doing. Let's see how that sounds all the way through. Yeah, I can work with this. And either a vocal part would go over here or I'm going to do like a lead guitar part as if it was a voice. Yeah, that feels like it's leading back to the B. I want to lead somewhere else, but uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just showing you how the software works and how you can become a one man band using these products. So I'm not going to go crazy with the changes. This is not a songwriting video. Um, we're just going to do one more thing here then I'll play some guitar over it and that'll be it. We want to add bass onto this as well. And now that we have MIDI that wasn't uh, AI generated, I have the MIDI from the keyboard here, or I can use the MIDI from the drum again, which is what we're going to do. I can take my easy bass plugin go back over here and I'm going to move it. I'm going to be over the top of it a little bit there and I can go to my drum software. And this is the drum that I use the uh, drum loop because it's one of the ones in the software and not an AI generated one. I can drag it over. And I'm thinking now that I said that I bet you I could have dragged the AI one over when it was in the screen before I should have thought of that. In any case, let's see what happens if we have it be, Yeah, like along with the bass and the snare. So I can drop it in here. And then what I'm going to have to do is line it up with the keyboard. So you see, again, it's just kind of monotone here. I can line it up with the keyboard. And if I load the keyboard plug in, and I've got the chords that it's playing laid out in front of me. So I just have to sit here with this one and use the scissor tool like I did before and match when it's B there, make it B on the bass. When it's A there, make it A on the bass. And I can also, if I don't like this, just plain following the snare and the bass, I can go through some of the metal grooves, see what I like. Uh, we're up tempo here, I think, at 150 something, that's 180, but I can take something Yeah, that, that's not something I would use here, but, you know, looking through these, I can find something that I might think is good. That's a little nuts. You get the idea. You'd spend some time going through and finding bass parts that fit what you're doing. There's so many of them to choose from, but I'll let it and we'll just keep the one that's kind of AI generated here. And then I'm going to do some playing over it.
there you have a quick one-man band demo for software that you can purchase at a grand total of 507 bucks. It's not cheap, but it's less than the cost of any professionally decent guitar, and of course you can spend plenty more buying extra MIDI libraries and variations of the instruments, but you can do a ton with what comes with each one uh, right out of the box, and not to mention you can always write your own parts and edit the MIDI so it's fitting whatever you're doing. Anyway, if you want to know more about recording on your own, check out my In The Studio playlist for lots of tips and more software that will make your mixes sound truly pro. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I get back to everyone as soon as I can. And until next time, guys, keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.